spooky cute for day one. We'll ramp our way up through the rest of the month. So that didn't happen. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I had lots of plans, lots of plans for October, but uh, life, life had some other plans. Um, not to get too uh, emotional or drama drama, I had to go rescue my childhood dogs from a neglect situation. You can see one of them, Sabrina, is just laying down here nice and resting. Oh, come here girl. Oh, we got the other one. Shy little, little Bella here. <laughs> She's like, wait a minute, why is she getting all the attention? She said, what's going on? Hey, mamas. Hey. So I had to go rescue my childhood dogs. So uh, all of my time obviously went to them. I wasn't able to do any of the videos I wanted, any of the art pieces I wanted, but obviously family's first, my dogs are first, so they needed vet care and stuff and they're on their way to recovery, they're doing pretty pretty good, so I mean that's just what I've been doing. But <sighs> it had to be during October, my favorite month. I wanted to do all the things, yes, yes I wanted to do all the things. But that's okay, because we still got one, we got one more video right on the cusp of Halloween, but we got one more. I was looking at Instagram and I found a artist under, uh, I believe, Moss and Moonshine. I'll put their Instagram and all their tags and stuff. They made like a creature, but it had a jack-o'-lantern type head and I was looking at that and I was like, oh, well that's, that's pretty cool. I like that. And I was like, cat, jack-o'-lantern, cat jack-o'-lantern. I want to make this. This needs to be a thing. So that is what we're going to be making today is a jack-o'-lantern cat. I know it's strange and stuff, but it's Halloween vibes, so why not? If you guys do happen to enjoy the chaotic energy and the end result and just, you know, want to see more of me, please consider subscribing. Please like and comment on this video. I know I haven't posted all month. The algorithm don't like that. And a like and a comment helps me pay for these dogs vet bills. So I would very much appreciate it. Okay, let's get started. To start off, we are going to be tearing some tin foil and squishing it into the roughish head shape of a pumpkin that I'm going for. Now, I do this because one, clay is really expensive, and two, I actually want this piece to be pretty hollow on the inside so that I'm going to be able to add lights later on. But once I have that shape, I kind of slap on some clay in an even-ish layer, keep it as even as possible, but you know, go with the flow. <laughs> and then I just mark out where I want the little pumpkin, I don't even know, like, nodules, indents, I'm not really sure what you call them, but the little indents in a pumpkin, that's what I want. <laughs> so that's what we're adding. Once I got a good pumpkin base, it was time to start essentially carving. And let me tell you, this step, oh man, it was definitely the distrust the process because, man, oh man, was this something that I obviously have never done before, never made a pumpkin, I've never tried to make a pumpkin into a cat, into a realistic cat, in no doubt, but... Let me tell you, the further I went on, that just looks not like what I want. That looks demonic. <laughs> but with a little bit of perseverance and a lot of crying, we got there and we got an end result that looks like this, which is more derpy, cursed, cute kitty, which I'm totally fine with because it's way better than whatever that demonic thing was. But I thought the back was a little bit blank. So guess what we're gonna do? Add a whole other face. So we're just gonna repeat the same process of tracing out a pattern, carving it out with some very sharp tools that I need to be careful with, crying over what it looks like, and with the power of some mediocre editing, we get this lovely little guy, which is definitely more typical Jack and Leonard style, but still has a little bit of the cat vibe. Now it's not really much of a kitty without some adorable kitty ears and so that's what we're going to be adding next. But I can't just add them typically how I would and have them cemented on the actual piece because 
we got two faces now, so we need to make sure that they can switch around. So I'm going to be doing this with magnets. I just circle a little spot on top of the head where I want the magnets to go, and clearly you can see exactly what I'm doing, and I'm not out of frame at all. <laughs> but I'll put a, the magnet inside, and then I'll put a little piece of clay over it so that you can't see it, but it's still magnetized and will attach to the other magnet. And then I do the exact same step to the ears making sure that the magnets are going the exact same way because I didn't have to learn that lesson twice before I finally got it right. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? I did an initial bake, obviously off camera, but after that cooled, it was time to remove essentially what is the pumpkin guts. They're just a little bit more metallic in this case. <laughs> But once I removed all that, it was all nice and hollow and it was time to add some translucent clay. And the reason I was adding this is because I want this to be glowing like a lit jack-o'-lantern, I need some kind of way to diffuse and disperse the light so that it's going to be looking nice and even and as bright as possible. And the best clay for that is actually translucent clay because it looks super opaque right now, but once it's baked, it's very translucent. It will disperse the light evenly and it'll make all the lights shine through until it'll look bright and exactly what I want. And while that goes through its second bake, it's time to work on some little kitty paws, which are pretty simple. I don't do super fancy feet or anything because I hate sculpting feet because I have to sculpt four of them and that makes me not happy. <laughs> but I just mark where the paws are going to go, kind of shape them a little bit with uh, some silicone tools and I don't do anything fancy and they just look like cute little kitty paws. Don't got to do anything fancy don't, to get the point across. Just a little, little bit of this, a little bit of that. Look at that cute paws. <laughs> And once everything was baked, it was time for sanding for days to get a smooth-ish surface. And then, something a little bit different from my channel, I'm actually going to be painting everything before I attach it to the body. I know a lot of you guys always ask me why I always do this part like after everything's sewn together and stuff, and that's mostly just comes down to I usually bang everything on the floor and, and you know, on the desk and stuff, and I'm very violent and chaotic, and so I just paint it afterwards so I don't have to deal with paint chipping off and scratching off. Yep, that's my secret. I'm chaotic and I throw everything everywhere. <laughs> AKA, I drop everything because I'm a klutz. <laughs> we get a little sneak peek of how the ears are going to work. I think the magnets turned out really well and exactly how I wanted. And with the painting done, it's now time for ASMR armature time. Where, good Lord, I shot that across off the table and now I don't know where that poor pot went. <laughs> With the armature done, it's now time to build up the body. And for that, like always, I'm going to be using quilt batting. And it just comes in this really big long cotton sheet because it's, you know, made for quilts. And then I'll cut it into little strips and wrap it around the body over and over until the body is built up to how I want. Making sure not to go too thick because I'm going to be adding fabric over this and that's going to add additional thickness. But like I always say, like I always say, if you want chunk 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 boy, you go and you get chunk 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 boy. If you want thin 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 boy, you go and you get thin 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 boy, okay? We support all body shapes and sizes here. This kitty ended up being like small chunk. He, he, he a little small chunk. <laughs> With that done, it's now time to figure out how I'm going to light this thing. And I'm going to use fairy lights. And they happen to be so perfect, in fact, that I'm not even going to bother to unravel them. <laughs> but yes, I'm honestly just going to stick the unraveled, just fresh out of the box fairy lights into the head and just look how well it lights that already. I don't really, really got to do anything, so that worked out pretty well in my favor. I just put a ring of glue around the fairy lights, shoved it on in there. 
and just pressed it against the face until it dried. Now I did add two fairy lights for both sides just to make sure that they would both be as bright as possible. And here I'm just making sure that the glue somehow didn't mess up the fairy lights, but here they- it looked- it lurked. <laughs> did I just bring back Willert? It worked well and looked well is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> And with the lights done, it's now time to sew fabric over the body. And I'm going to be using this glorious black fur. All I'm saying, Karen, all I'm saying is with love and respect, hold that body up. That's a new cryptid. <laughs> I don't know what it means. <laughs> 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 With the shenane gains done, it's now time to actually sew the body. And to start that, I just cut a piece of fabric the entire length of the doll. And then I'll cut little slits around each limb, kind of like I'm making a vest because I'll slide the little legs through. Or weird fur jacket. Oh god. Well, that's not weird because there's fur jackets, but like that's not ethical. Don't faux fur people. Use faux fur. <laughs> Anyways. I'll cut slits, I'll make a little weird vest, and then I'll just sew that straight down the middle using a basic baseball stitch. This is how we get gold! <laughs> you wait, wait, wait. in! <laughs> The legs get a similar treatment. I'll cut a piece of fabric the entire length of the limb and then trim it down so it's nice and snug. And starting from the feet first, I'll sew up with the same baseball stitch. The final step for this little guy is going to be trimming up the faux fur. And for that, I'm going to be using a pet trimmer, which is my absolute go-to. It just gets the fur off quickly, smoothly, evenly. It's just, ah, oh, it's a beautiful thing. But even so, I like to always go back in with thinning scissors and just normal scissors and tidy up the legs because usually the pet shaver is only really good for big areas. So for small things like the legs and stuff and to make sure that all the joints are nice and prominent, I like to go back in with scissors. And with the final snips of the scissors, this little beauty is all trimmed, which means it is all finished and it's now time to go terrorize kids in the cornfields or Sarah in my office. <laughs> Take a nibble or or do a hunt oh it took a nibble oh it took a nibble well at least you know i put the crucifix in the right spot <laughs> i watched it take a nibble oh it took two nibbles oh it took two nibbles it took back to back nibbles oh my god oh multiple nibbles oh, okay oh, okay yep i'm fine <laughs>